Okay, today we are going to look at um, creating a good performance um, in your notation files. And we're the, the tools that we're going to use are contained only in Notation Composer. Okay, so if you have Notation Musician, um, you won't be able to do the things that we're going to look at in this video. And if you want to try them out, then you can go and download a tr free trial version of Composer or even just go upgrade now. Um, so anyway, on we go. The tools that we're going to look at in this particular video will encompass um, some of the notes tools, specifically the uh, grace notes and the ornaments. We're also going to look at the piano roll and we're going to look at um, note velocities sound changes, which we don't have any in this particular file right here. Um, we will not look at graph over notes because graph over notes is going to have its own video. So um, look for that coming soon. So for now, we're going to look at, <coughs> excuse me, um, for, the, for the immediate time right here, we will look at the notes and rests um, tool palettes and specifically we're going to look at um, grace notes and the ornaments. Okay, First we're going to look at grace notes. Now I've kind of cheated here. <laughs> we're going to deconstruct uh, just to show you uh, where some of the tools and things are. We will also add them back so that you can hear. Um, one thing that you need to understand about grace notes is that they borrow time. Um, because Notation Composer is a hybrid notation slash MIDI sequencer, um, MIDI needs to have specific time points. It needs to add up. All the notes in a measure need to add up correctly for the performance to be correct. Okay, You can't just go willy-nilly throwing notes in there because MIDI doesn't like that. So, um, But it's one of the keys you know, to getting a correct performance from your notation. Okay, so the constraint is a good one, but what we're going to look at here, um, you will see when you have a grace note, or we can, we're going to go into add mode here, and we're going to right click. Okay, so now you see the tools light up a little better. Okay, we can borrow time from the left or from the right. If you're going to borrow time from the left, then you cannot put the note before the very first note of your score. Okay, simply because there's no time to the left to borrow. Um, so we would borrow from the right. Typically if you're going to grace a note that's that's on the right of the grace note, that's where you'll borrow the time from. Um, if you're adding little uh, a little grace note after note, then you'll typically choose uh, to do the borrow time from the left. So if I wanted to grace this note here where I've got it set on top, then I would use borrow time from the left. I would put that here. So um, I'm not promising that these will be musically good. <laughs> I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, as again, a lot of what you want to do is experiment. Um, go through, take your you know, take your time, um, and listen to what happens. You can always undo anything that you don't like. Okay, so let's take a listen. Okay, that sounded pretty funky, so you can select it. You can undo it. Um, we can um, choose to grace that note on this side, and that might sound a little better. Let's try it. Okay, so I'm going to use my I'm gonna hold my P key. Uh, you can either rewind it all the way, or you can use the P key and then click where you want to start playback. Okay, click play. Okay, so you can hear a little bit about how that sounds. This is a dulcimer uh, sound font that I'm using for this particular one. Okay, so grace notes. Um, you can also use automatic stem direction, or you can put the stem, you know, how you want it, uh, just depending on what you want it to look like. Um, there are a few other things. So grace note addition is pretty easy. Um, you can you can do some different things with 
um, the notation aspect of that, but we're not really going to get into the notation part of it here. We're just looking at the performance aspect at this point. Okay, I'm going to delete that. So it's selected, it's blue. I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. Ta-da, it's gone. Okay, so now you'll see there are a couple of other ornaments here. This is a mordant. Um, there's downward turning, which means there's the note that you hear um, goes down. We're going to put the playback right here. Okay, so you can hear how the downward turning mordant sounds. Um, we can change that to an upward turning mordant. Okay, and then you can hear how that sounds. Okay, again, for some of these performance changes, um, it's just play around with it. You know, add some different things, try them out, see what they sound like. Um, that's the mordant. You'll also notice that here, whee, or some of these, um, we have tremolos. Okay, and we'll let you hear how that sounds. Okay, um, there are just some different, you know, there's some different uh, ornaments that you can add that when you add that to the notation, it actually changes the performance of that note. Um, there are also uh, arpeggios, and I'll show you one of those here in just a second. Um, accidentals, you can, you can change for if you have uh, trills and stuff, um, such as... Okay, you have uh, trills, or if you have a trill in a file that you find, you can convert it from all that written out notation to just the trill ornament mark. Okay, and it's these are these two are the same. They are just two separate um, ways of note of notating that or annotating that on your score. Okay, so let's take that. We're going to change that. Actually, we're going to delete it first. And then we're going to make it into a trill. Okay. So we're going to hit the P key, bring that back here, take a listen. Okay. So you can hear the difference. That holds the trill for the duration of this note. Okay. That wasn't exactly the effect that we would want for that particular note. So we're going to take that out. <laughs> um, you can also add what's called a turn. Okay, there's a delayed turn, there's a turn. Um, I'm going to show you the difference there. We're going to put a turn on that note. Okay, we'll come back and play it. Okay, we can also change that into a delayed turn. Okay, and you can see that the notation actually has shifted a little bit to show you that it's a delayed turn. Okay, we'll come back here. Okay, so you can hear the difference in the performance there. Um, <coughs> we'll change this back to here. Now, um, you can remove the ornament symbol, but not the performance. You can remove the ornament symbol and the performance. Okay, so what this would do now, see this gives you the actual written out notation, what that ornament looks like. It's pretty hairy looking, um, <laughs> which is why... Um, we give you the option to use just the ornament symbol. Okay. So with that in mind, we we can uh, take a look at, um, or you, well, you can you could hear some of the other tremolos. Okay. Now let's go to here. I just kind of fast forwarded there. I'm going to add some notes in that last. So, again, we're going to use P key, come here, play that chord. Okay, you hear they all sound at the same time, all sound at the same note. Um, what we're going to do, 
oops, we're going to go to the ornaments menu and we're going to make that an arpeggio. Okay, so here's the this is an upward arpeggio, which means it starts with the first note here. You could do a downward arpeggio, which means it would start with the top note here and play down. Okay, we're going to back up again. Let's take a listen to the upward arpeggio. Okay, um, this is effective, especially this is hammered dulcimer, so it's kind of weird for that, but it's effective, especially for like guitar. Um, if you have chords that you would want to sound like they're strummed, um, this is an excellent way to achieve that effect. You can use the arpeggio um, for harp music or uh, for any other music that you would look at uh, doing that piano music as well. Okay, um, so you can also select the ornament as we've seen before. You can delete that or you, we could change it and you can hear the difference in the performance. Okay, so that was going to start with the high note and going down. Um, again, if you want to see what that would look like in notation, the actual, what the, what the MIDI thing is thinking, um, looks kind of hairy. So that's one reason that we have use ornaments or ornament symbols. Okay. Okay, so we're going to look now at piano roll. Um, there are a uh, few things to note here. Um, you can do some very fine control over the duration of your notes using the piano roll. Okay, um, and you'll notice that the the actual uh, it's called piano roll because the representation of the note duration is shown as a this yellow rectangle here. Okay, you can edit each of those very finely. You'll see the values here for um, attack and release. Okay, um, you can use the tools here. Shift as notated and as performed. Oh, this is a very important thing here. If you want, if you like the notation the way it looks, but you do want to change the performance of the notes, you can use these different um, tools here. This is for to edit both the as notated and as performed. You can also edit the as notated only, um, which means you leave the performance as it is, but you want to change the notation. Okay, so you would click this and then go back to your notes and rests palette to mess with your notation. But the underlying MIDI performance would be locked. Okay, so in other words, if you have um, a nice performance of a file, but you want to get some more simplified notation, then that's what you would use. You use the edit as notated, click here, and then go back and, and work on the notation. Okay, that's not what we're about on this video though. And as you and you'll see that the um, the clear uh, piano rolls show that those notes are locked. Okay. The performance is locked. You can change the notation to whatever you want, but that note, the way it plays, will stay exactly the way it is. Um, what we might, what you might want to do, is to edit the as performed note attacks and durations. Okay. Now you'll notice that when you do that, the the notation grays out. Okay. That's to show you that whatever you do to the performance of this note that notation is going to stay the way it is. Okay, so if we select that one, okay, we select that and we increase the duration perhaps. Okay, we're going to increase the import. Okay, you can see that duration is going way out there, but the notation stays the same. Okay, um, we don't really want to do that. So we're not really going to do that. We're going to undo. Whoops. That went back one too far. Okay. Um, you can use these to shift the performance if you want to give sort of a lazy feel where you're not, where notes are not hitting right on the beat. You can shift the notation a little bit. Okay. You can also select multiple notes just the same as you do for other, um, uh, you know, other editing uh, functions. Okay. Click that was a. 
quick drag across those. Excuse me. Um, now, something else that you may want to do um, is to you can up, you can do note duration adjustments. Okay, this is for all you really fine techie heads there. Uh, <laughs> this default table of note durations, okay, is set up so that most MIDI files that are recorded. Um, either by hand or that are entered, will give very readable sheet music. Okay, if say for whatever reason, maybe you don't like the way that it shows up. Maybe you're recording your own files and you have a different touch when you play. Um, you can experiment here. Okay, you can uh, change the adjustment, and this is in ticks. Um, and you see here one quarter note is equal to 480 MIDI ticks. Okay, um, You can change any of these to whatever values you want. And then you can save them and you can also apply them to uh, the score that you have here. Okay, You can save it as a default if you, you know, like I said, if you're recording a number of your own MIDI files or, or you have MIDI files from a source and you want to make some changes so that you get consistent notation between them all, go ahead and save your default. Okay. Um, if you've saved something before, um, you can import that back. All right. Okay. So we're going to X out of there. Um, so the piano roll is for just really finely adjusting uh, the um, the the way it sounds, the duration of the notes. Okay. For some instruments, that's not as important as for others. Um, you know, for trumpets. If you want to um, indicate, oh, here's another fun one. If you want to, um, let's see, let's make, let's make that. And we're going to do a little changing here, okay? And we're going to put some rests in between these notes here. I'm just changing the durations so that we have note rest, note rest type of thing. Okay. Um, under, oops, excuse me. Get back here. Get back. Under accents, there's a cool little tool that if you if you get a MIDI file that has this type of thing here where you're looking at um, some very what would sound like staccato type of thing. And let's change the ne the s instrument here to a more appropriate instrument. Um, let's say a trumpet. Okay. So if you have a file like this that has notes and rests type of thing. Okay, so you can hear. Okay. Um, you can actually replace that note and rest with a staccato note so that instead of having all these rests in here, what you get is this. Okay, It's a little cleaner looking notation. Now you'll notice though that the... Okay. The performance doesn't change, but the way it's notated changes. Okay, that's sort of outside the scope of this, but thought I'd mention it since we were there. Okay, let's move on to note velocity. Okay, the note velocity is how hard you hit a note. Okay, you'll notice here that we have some differences in note velocity. Okay, and you can do that to add emphasis. Okay, so let's say here. Okay, we're going to go back and change this to oh, something that'll be a little more obvious, perhaps. Um, actually, the piano in this is pretty loud. Um, <laughs> oh, let's just have some fun. How about let's go with an oboe? Okay. Okay, you can hear those. Now the velocity, we could change that to 
um, something quite low. Okay, um, and you'll notice that's probably not the best in the show. It's changed, and you can actually watch that change. Let's do that one. Um, let's do one down here so that we're not showing up all over it. Okay, you can see how that changes when I click here. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of L plus the up or down arrow button. Okay, that one's going to be really loud compared to the rest of them. Um, we'll come down here. So this should be interesting because we've got a trouble on it too. Okay, not the best example. Let's try this again. Um, let's do something here. Okay, or you can, if you want to, enter constant velocity without going through the up and down thing. You can do that here. Okay, and you can also use if you're go if you're entering notes. Um, the default is set to 96. You can change that to um, any value that you want, and then you can use that as your default for any newly added notes. Okay? Um, so, let's say that you wanted to put all those down really low. We're going to give them like a um, 10. So it's it'd be almost like we're coming up to the background. Here. Okay, so that again, uh, that'll be dependent how how it sounds is going to depend on your device. Some sound libraries um, have a very fine touch feature that depends on the note velocity. So, for example, if you were physically playing a piano and you lightly touch the strings, you'll notice that it has a different timbre to the sound than if you really you know, bang on it hard. Some sound libraries are better at emulating that than others, and so the note velocity may be more important um, for uh, the GS wavetable or for a, a number of other low-end um, MIDI devices, it's not such a big deal. It just it, it sort of sounds like a velocity or a um, volume thing, um, but it is more important for other uh, things such as Garrison libraries or other uh, East West. I think is another orchestral library that has um, very fine control. Okay. Okay. The next um, item that we're going to look at is sound changes. Okay, sound changes can be very effective for, um, especially for changing between instruments such as pizzicato strings, uh, then to arco or uh, the sustained. Okay, and and that's the example that I'm going to use now. Um, you can also you can change any staff that you want to. Um, sometimes um, big band players will, um, mu the musicians will will play two or three different instruments, and it could be helpful in he your hearing during composition. Um, to put the instrument changes that each of those musicians will be playing. Um, so you could change between, say, clarinet and saxophone or, or whatever it is that they'll be playing. Okay, so here, I'm going to let you listen to this. This is a pizzicato string, just a little ditty here. Okay, now, let's say that we wanted the first three notes to be the pizzicato, but we want to change this to arco. Okay, so we go to sound changes. And it automatically puts you, Composer automatically puts you into add mode. And so really all you have to do is you just click where you want to add that. So we're going to put that here. Okay. We can display some text in there if you want to. And I'm going to put Arco. And then we're going to find, excuse me, the um, violin. Okay. And we'll put that. So here. And that, I've got this kind of huge. Um, anytime you mouse over it, it's going to show you uh, what your selection is for that sound change. Okay, So now, when we play it, hear that. Okay, now if you don't want this shining out in your score, you can hide these. Okay, The text will still stay there. 
um, so it'll show you, you can and you can change that you know if you want to make it look nice you want to make it look a little smaller you know just the same as your other text items you can uh, work with you can also um, sh you know if you decide whoops that's not where I want that instrument change you can shift it around if you want to okay um, so that's pretty straightforward and with that um, is the end of this particular tutorial thanks and have fun